Hello everybody, I'm Boaz Fyler, I'm a friendly neighborhood evolutionary astrologer and I'm here with the evolutionary astrology message for the week between the 11th and the 18th of November 2017. So, what do we have in the celestial dome this week? First of all, we're starting this weekend with a very blissful influence of Saturn trining Uranus. Now, these two planets, they don't like each other usually. If you want to find out why, you could look at Greek mythology but when they do work in cohesion when they work in unison they can do great stuff together because remember that Uranus is the rebel rebellion is the rebel that uh, um, wants to innovate and walk forward and go towards the future and of course Saturn is the old teacher doing things as they should be done and as they have been done for the last millennia so two different influences but when they are trining together they are able to bring that innovation to bring that forward thinking and still make sure that we're doing it in a logical feasible and an efficient manner that can prove uh, useful on the grounds of reality that is not too out there so we're able to to beneficially uh, um, take our projects forward and still be very much attached to reality and to the constrictions that that provides and work with it work with it in order to bring beneficial results and why am i saying it because even though today this uh, this aspect is in peak and from now it deteriorates today we have a grand fire trine because the moon in leo joins these to trining each other and even though this is the middle of the weekend this is a great day to take things forward to work on your projects and to actually provide a breakthrough on the 12th we have the moon in Virgo opposite Neptune now this is I mean as opposite as you get I mean you have the moon in Virgo which is very analytical very strict and could be even very judgmental or critical about himself or about others in his life or her life and then we have Neptune on the other side which is totally out there totally out there and and is all about creativity and and sensitivity and spirituality and artistic uh, endeavors and so it's right brain left brain and they're opposing so that could be a day that we could either be very critical upon ourselves and upon other people in our lives for not being analytical enough aware enough for being too forgetful or lazy or just um, not focused enough or that we could walk between these two poles in that day so just try and and, and harness all that imaginative uh, all that imaginative energy all that creative energy and take it into a more practical uh, and result work with these energies one more thing you know that the trine between Uranus and Saturn reminded me and forgive me for going backwards but I wanted to share this with you because it made me laugh if we say Uranus is the rebellion and Saturn is the old strict way so it's 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 really like you know it's it's, it's Star Wars all over again and 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 it's it's the rebellion working together with the Empire could you imagine if the rebels would join forces with the empire they would be unstoppable they would be unstoppable <laughs> I don't know why I wanted to share this but I just did I like the, uh, the analogy um, on the 13th we have Venus conjunct Jupiter uh, at its height and we've been feeling this influence for the past couple of days and it's a mitigating influence for all the other more tense influences in the sky because that's a wonderful in uh, influence Venus conjunct Jupiter Venus the planet of satisfaction the planet of love the planet of relationships the planet of food drink income everything that sustains us in this material plane and brings us pleasure it's conjunct Jupiter the great benefactor that expands everything so on the one hand we can enjoy ourselves a lot more we can enjoy our carnal being our five senses a lot more 
can enjoy the company of others a lot more. We can enjoy our relationships and love a lot more in romance. It can become pretty ideological as well with Jupiter there. We can have a lot of ideological connections to our relationships or romance. But this is really a blissful influence. And it's on its height on the 13th and then it mitigates. Um, but... This is also a day that the moon is in Virgo again, square Saturn opposing Chiron. These are always two sensitive days in a week that I always tell you about. Be careful not to be too critical, too judgmental upon yourselves and or others, regarding yourselves or others in your lives. And just flow with things, you know, know, know how to uh, round corners on that day. And of course the Venus conjunct Jupiter is going to help you a lot. But still, I wanted to say that on the 15th, we are going to really start feeling the influence we've been talking about last week of Mars squaring Pluto. This is a very militaristic, this is a very aggressive, this is a very violent kind of energy. Uh, that square between Mars and Pluto. And of course remember that this square is about, if we're talking about internally, internally, psychologically and emotionally, this is about tension and a struggle between our <clears throat> conscious uh, objectives, needs, and wants, and our unconscious uh, desires and fears, and all that uh, source codes, <laughs> and uh, uh, all those, uh, you know, uh, protocols that make this computer who we are up, but run underneath the surface, run in the background. So just to give you an analogy, an example off the top of my head, let's say that I really want my children to become more independent. This is something I'm working for consciously. But unconsciously, I have this tremendous anxiety that something would happen to them because I have a post-trauma in that particular subject in my life in the past. At this time, these two influences can come up and can play a part within my psyche, can play a part within my life. They can show up in my reality and the external situation and then bring the internal, uh, um, you know, um, showdown, bring it up to my psyche, bring it up to my, to my uh, consciousness and have that uh, um, pros and cons and all that uh, melee go on within me. Or it can come up internally and then present itself to the outside, you know, and, and needing to have a change in the outside because of that internal, internal conflict. Now, of course, in the outside world, in the general, in general society, this is a more aggressive, more uh, a time prone for power struggles or for violence. And of course, we need to watch out from that, and we need to understand that some people in our lives might be going through that internal struggle at this time as well and we could meet that violence from external sources we could meet that conflict from external sources as well on the good on the good side this is a time that actually pushes us forward that doesn't let us look to other sides and neglect what it is that needs to be changed that demands action that helps us overcome those challenges that we have in our lives. Why am I saying it now? It's going to be exact only on the 19th. Why are we talking about that on the 15th? Because on the 15th, the moon joins Mars and is going to fuel that square. So we're going to feel it on the 15th, we're going to feel it on the 16th, we're going to feel it on the 17th, on the 18th, and on the 19th, and of course a couple of days after that, and it mitigates and it dissipates. <clears throat> on the 17th, we have the moon in square and I just want to say that on the 18th we have a new moon in Scorpio. So the 16th and the 17th and the 18th are energetic preparations for this new moon. And remember that I'm always saying that every new moon is a time of an energetical imprint. Especially on the day of the new moon but also on the two days leading to the new moon. So I always watch for the energies that go and pass through me through that day the thoughts the emotions the uh, communication that I have in my surroundings keeping it hygienic you know 
keeping the hygiene as high as I can both emotionally and mentally and verbally um, because these can be imprinted all these energies are imprinted and they follow us for the next lunar cycle so let's say you know and, and I've tried this many times before but let's say on a day of a new moon in the morning time I was very angry with somebody but then I realized it was the new moon and I said okay forget that anger let's do something fun and from that moment on my day was splendid so uh, consequently if, if what I'm saying is true and check it out yourselves and I would love your feedback on it the first week or week and a half in the month would be more turbulent aggressive and 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 you know angry with angry energies and then later the next two and a half three and a half weeks uh, I'm sorry two and a half weeks are going to be pleasant and I've tried it before this works for me it checked out but I want you uh, to try it on on your own and and give me your feedback okay so the 16th the 17th and 18th watch that hygiene that personal inner hygiene so on the 17th we have the moon in Scorpio conjunct Jupiter and Venus and the Sun this is an intense day on the one hand a, a day that could be very symbiotic or intimate on the other and it could be a wonderful day it could be a day to strengthen connections and bonds between you and other people who are important for you in your life and enjoy yourselves during that day it could be an adventurous day it, it's a great day for intimacy it's a great day for sexuality it's a great day for sensuality and it's a great day to fully give yourself towards something in your life be that a project or be that a person or be that an adventure and just float uh, along with it give yourself to the universe you know su surrender yourself and on the 18th we have the new moon in 26 Scorpio and every new moon in Scorpio is about regeneration it's about metamorphosis it's about understanding that this cocoon needs to hatch and spread its wings and you know Pluto is very much about those final moments between the baby uh, uh, um, um, when the baby in the womb gets that feeling gets that notion gets that you know um, notion all through its body and psyche that even though this womb is comfortable and supplies everything that I might need it's too constrictive for me I can't stay here anymore this is not my place anymore I have to leave and it's just the moment before we are pushed be into the birth canal and into a new reality this is the plutonian moment leaving something that is comfortable that is uh, that is stable that provides everything that i might need maybe even you know but is not authentic that is not developmental anymore development could not continue in that stage we have to walk through the gates of the death of the old stage and the birth of the new stage in order to continue to develop every new moon in scorpio is about that moment is about that threshold is about under that understanding that the old needs to die in order for the new to breathe it's about, you know, and uh, the archetype of Scorpio is Scorpio and then, of course, the serpent and then, of course, the eagle. The three layers, the three dimensions of Scorpio, by Scorpio being a slave to its own desires and nature. And, of course, the serpent understanding that in order to transcend, in order to grow, in order to develop, it needs to leave something behind. It needs to leave the scales that had protected it in the past behind. And I have to be extremely brave for that. Because during the first couple of days, I'm going to be extremely vulnerable because my new scales are not hardened yet. So the serpent is wise and brave for doing that and leaving those old, old protective layers behind. And that's, again, something that we should do and in the new moon and this new moon is going to quincunx uranus 
And when the new moon quincunx is Uranus, of course, there's a, a, a greater... I see a quincunx as a Chironic uh, uh, aspect, like Chiron. And of course, for me, it says a lot about taking things out of our lives, cleansing, purifying, healing, and really providing a space for the new to come in by that cleansing and taking out the old and the unbeneficial from our lives. And when it comes to Uranus, of course, the, our role in front of the clan and in front of the group or within the group or within the, clim, uh, within the clan comes to mind. And of course, the need for walking forward, the need for advancing towards the future, for thinking differently, thinking outside the box and bringing new concepts into our reality, into our emotional reality, into the place that we identify with our own persona. The moon is all about what we've taken from that objective, wide experience, never-ending experience called life and this existence, and what has actually sipped through these emotional sponges, personal emotional sponges, and became personal, became part of us, part of our emotional identity. So this is about change and advancement and cleansing within our emotional identity. And of course, since this is Scorpio, and if we take it to the uh, lower planes, change and transmutation within our more carnal aspects, our psychological aspects, and of course, our sexual aspects as well. Things need to advance and change and transmute and evolve. Cleansing, friends. Of course, I want you. Uh, I want to thank you for watching, and I want to tell you that every comment you leave, every like or or or, or uh, uh, emoticon you leave, or every share that you do, really heightens the exposure of these videos. And this is your way of thanking me for these videos, and I'm thanking you again for it. And of course, for private consultation courses, we're opening a group up in English for the studies of evolutionary astrology from Zilch and also an advanced group and it's through the computer or your smartphone you can join from wherever you, you are around the world and study with me so contact me for more details about that and any question you might have this is Boaz Feiler signing out have a beautiful rest of the weekend and a beautiful week ahead thank you namaste bye bye <laughs>